Axel, just this morning, you were warning about risks in markets. We've seen record levels on indices, very low volatility. How is impact investing different and low risk in this environment? It is different because, you know, as, as we just heard, and uh, Bill's absolutely right, you tie the return of an investment to the impact the investment has. And that's a natural thing. So the more impactful you are, the better your return is. And in that, it doesn't become a, a substitute, it's a complement. So returns are a complement to the impact that this has. And I think that's, it needs to be mainstreamed. It needs to be standardized. We're still very, very far off. There is no common definition of what impact investment is. Some feel that they're already impact investing if they're investing into the equity of a company that does uh, sort of that is listed and does invest in sociable returns. But I think we really need to mainstream this. And I can tell you, when we talk to our clients, none of our clients would invest in products when we are not investing next side to them and put skin in the game. So. Mainstream companies like UBS or BlackRock, the CEO has recently in his letter to shareholders announced that they also want to put a bigger part of their investments in this area. And here we're talking, you know, hundreds of billions of balance sheets. Uh, we have, a, as the largest wealth manager globally, we basically have a balance sheet uh, of invested assets of 2.3 to 2.5 trillion, depends how you count. BlackRock, as an institution investor, is even larger. If you bring these players, to impact investing and to sustainable investing, it will be a game changer because along with those key investors, their clients will be brought to the game and I think that's what we need to do. We need to mainstream this, we need to standardize it, we need to upgrade it and make it a mainstream investment and not a niche investment product. And I think that's key. One, one point I would just add to this is, this is, this is sort of a little bit being master of the obvious here, but every investment has impact. The challenge we've had, and Chuck made this point earlier, is businesses like GE have had tremendous impact over the years. We've just never quantified it. So whether a business has a negative impact, not much of an impact at all, or a great positive impact, we deserve to know, given the implications for our world. So the point is, it's, it, we really want to create a dynamic where we have transparency to your earlier observation about what is the impact of a business. Consumers can then make the call. Millennials are two times more likely to buy a product from a business that has a positive impact. They're three times more likely to work for a business that has positive impact. So, you know, hail to the millennials. They've got soul and they're voting with their pocketbook. I, you know, I almost worry, you know, you, you get into this jargon problem, right? And impact investing, you know, as a brand has a jargon problem. It was, I reinforced Bill's point. You know, if someone had come to you for the initial investment in Genentech, or Novartis, or Tesla, they wouldn't have labeled it as an impact investment. And yet, look at the enormous social benefit those companies have, have, have created. So be, you don't want to, I think, overdo the label because I think uh, it gets into this problem that Bill mentioned where people think that they're going to sacrifice returns. I think the opposite is true. Businesses that are solving some of the biggest challenges in society have enormous economic potential because there's a great value in having those problems solved. People will pay for it. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.